What up, guys? The Bench Buddies are back. Ethan's back, as always, doing our preview and picks for the NFL. And we have our special guest, week one, our defending champion from last year, Cameron Migliaccio, or Migs, as everyone likes to call him. Obviously, huge Bengals fan. Yeah, you know, good year last year by them. And you got Ethan over there looking like a creative player in his Steelers jersey. <laughs> and obviously, me as a Packers fan, but... We'll get into it here, but before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a 200. We'll be doing that autographed item given, giveaway on a random generator, so make sure you guys are subscribed for that. Uh, but we'll look at last year's picks. Obviously, there's Cam winning it all last year. Week 14 was his week to take it home. Next week, we will have Jerry on the show to see if he can top Cam's record from last year, and then after that, it'll just be random. But we'll start Thursday night football. I'm going with the home team, the defending Super Bowl champs, the L.A. Rams. I feel like it's just hard to bet against the champs. Week one at home. Uh, Ethan, you're going with me as well. Why are you going with the Rams? Yeah, I just think that Thursday night football, a lot of pressure for both both squads. But uh, Rams are going to come off and set a, set a standard that it doesn't matter about last year, it just matters about this year. Uh, it's going to be a great game, and it could go either way. But I'm definitely just, I'm just taking the Rams. Yeah, Cam, I know you're going with Buffalo here. I mean, they're favored, but obviously it's on the road, tough environment. I'm a little biased. I got to bet against the Rams for a little while still. Buffalo picked up Von Miller. I feel like they got Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs. I feel like they got some heat. I feel like they got it. And then we move to the games on Sunday, starting off a nice week of red zone. Chris Harrison's back and and we just get to see it all, you know, it's great, great Sunday, but I'm going to go with the upset here, the Falcons. I think week one out of every week is the unpredictable week, just because you don't know what every team's got fully. Um, and I think the Falcons can pull off the upset here early, just kind of as the Saints did last year to the Packers, the absolute blowout uh, the Saints had last year. I don't think it's going to be like that, but I think the Falcons won't be as bad as many people think. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take the Saints. I think it's going to be a close one and, uh, but with Jameis Winston and Michael Thomas back, I, I think I think the Saints got it. They're going to be decent. They're not going to be as bad as everyone thinks this year with uh, you know everything going around in that organization. But uh, I think it's going to be a good start to the season here with a Week One W. I agree. Falcons team's just looking. They got a young offense. Not many weapons. It'll be tough to see what they can do. And then the revenge game for Baker, I think, and they're even favored here, just shows how much that, you know, everyone's betting on Baker at least week one here. Um, that's kind of my only reason why I'm going with the Panthers week one. I think he's going to light them up. Obviously, they also have a healthy CMC as well, and that's, you know, tough to stop no matter who the quarterback is. Uh, but the Browns, obviously, without Nishan for 11 weeks, you know, they're going to be a tough team to bet on and pick as well just because – you know, one obviously they're a run heavy team uh, with Chubb and Hunt, but Cam, why are you going with the Browns here? I feel like they can, you know, bottle the run a little bit. They got Miles Garrett, they got some corners outside. I think Baker Mayfield's still going to struggle a little bit throwing that ball on his own defense, even. Yeah, uh, I'm going with the Panthers as well, uh, but my my main reason is just because Baker. It's it's all the all the all the talk is about this game at one the one o'clock slate. And you know how Baker responds to all the talk and he gets really hyped up for those games. I think he's going to have a good game and beat his old team. And then an anticipated debut of Trey Lance in Chicago versus Justin Fields, the second year quarterback looking to prove himself under a new head coach. Um, I'm going with Lance and the Niners here, obviously making it to that NFC championship game last year with a completely different quarterback who is backing up Lance now. And, you know, they added, Debo obviously is there a healthy Kittle I see is a huge addition there um, but the defense I think for me is going to be the big question mark moving forward I don't see it being a problem here in this game uh, moving forward for the Niners that we're just going to have to learn about their defense from week to week yep uh, I think the Niners obviously the better roster here not not too much to not too much to bet against them in this game other than if Trey Lance just is very wildly inaccurate, but I don't think he's going to be too. I don't. I think he's going to have a solid debut, and it's a pretty easy debut, in my opinion, to start off with. Yeah, I think Justin Fields would have to do something pretty wild to pull up an upset here. 
All right, Ethan. Big one. You guys can just handle this one. I'm picking the Bengals, but obviously Steeler fan, Bengals fan. I'll just let you guys talk about this one. All right, I'll, I'll start since the it's a Steeler Nation. Uh, so Bengals, uh, obviously Bengals week's a big week for the Steelers. Uh, it's it's a good rivalry, good matchup all the time. Last year, the Bengals and Joe Burrow had a, had the Steelers number. So I think a lot of things are going to change. Uh, more of a mobile quarterback this year with Trubisky. And um, I think that defense just gonna, is going to hold them down just enough. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. And I think the Steelers are going to come out on top. I think that the Bengals' defense <laughs> is going to have a, a fun time out there. We saw what they did in those AFC championship games. I mean, we saw what they did with Patrick Mahomes, quarterbacks like Derek Carr. When the defense needed to step up, it stepped up. We know what the Bengals are capable of doing on the offense. They got weapons, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. I could keep going, but I think the Bengals will pocket the week one double way. And then I will just start here by going with the upset in the Detroit Lions. I will be picking the Lions here because I think this will be the big upset of week one. Um, kind of like last year, how Steelers beat Buffalo in Buffalo. Obviously, a lot of people forget about that because that's week one, end of the season. You know, it's a completely different story between the two teams. And I think it's going to kind of be the same narrative here. Um, Lions, obviously, with hard knocks there, everyone's kind of rooting for the Lions, you know, right now, just because they have so much going for them. And it seems like they're taking a step in the right direction. Um, but obviously, it's going to be tough to stop Hurts and his running ability. Now he has A.J. Brown as well. Uh, so it's interesting to see how that combination is going to work, but I think it's going to struggle early on. Yeah, I could see that happening, but I think this week one matchup, the Lions uh, had a really good offseason and a really good end to their season. So I do think they're headed in the right direction, but I just don't think this is the week where I can pick them to win. Taking the Eagles uh, might cover the spread. Um, even on the road, it's going to be a tough game, but – they, they have the playmakers now. Uh, could take a little while, could take a half or, or so, but I think they're going to pull it off. I agree. The Eagles have a lot of young star players. The Lions just still have to kind of prove themselves a little bit as a winning team to kind of get those bets. And then here on CBS, we got the Colts going into Houston. Um, I can pretty much speak for everyone on this one. This one's going to be one of the easier – picks um the favorite picks of the week here uh, obviously jonathan taylor versus one of the worst defenses in the league is a recipe versus disaster and then adding matt ryan who's a very solid veteran quarterback to the roster with a rookie alec pierce at wide out uh, you know mo alley cox is a good tight end as well and i just think the offense is just going to be too much for the texans there but hey don't sleep on davis mills and brandon cooks i think those two will have a really good year as well as well Yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. So then we got here, um, Patriots, Dolphins. Uh, Ethan, I'll let you talk about this sweep across the board here. So Patriots have had a really uh, questionable offseason. I don't like the way they're headed as a team. Uh, and across the other side in Miami, uh, had a great offseason getting Tyreek Hill, one of the best playmakers in the game. Um, I, I think they're going to score a lot of points. Dolphins, the Patriots always play, or the Dolphins always play the Patriots tough at home. So just given that, plus all the playmakers, Tua's looking pretty good this offseason. I just think this is uh, the Patriots year to struggle a little bit, and the Dolphins are going to take it to them in week one. Pretty solid. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Cam, obviously you're kind of feeling the same way there. Yeah. And then, Cam, I'll let you talk about this sweep across the board here. Uh, I just think the Ravens are a more developed team They've got Lamar Jackson. He won the MVP. You know, he's that guy. I think that he's going to do some damage to the Jets' defense. They've got new young corner, Sauce Gardner, but he's done pretty good in the preseason. We'll see how he does against Lamar Jackson in the postseason. But it'll be an interesting game for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree. You know, and obviously a healthy J.K. Dobbins. Um, he's trending not towards playing, but if he does play, Obviously, that'll be something to see make his debut as well. Uh, but for the one o'clock games, almost wrapping up here, we got the new look Washington Commanders versus the Jaguars, who 
are expected to bounce back and have a better year than last year. Um, but just on that, I got to go with the Commanders and Carson Wentz. Uh, obviously, bringing Wentz into the mix has finally given them a quarterback. And if you compare blind stats of quarterbacks, I think you'd be more surprised on how good Carson Wentz is compared to the narrative and what media tells you. Um, but other than that, you know, they got Antonio Gibson, Brian Robinson should have been starting, but obviously his whole situation could be his whole season in doubt. But they have Scary Terry as well. And that's, you know, just all you need to know for this Washington team with a decent defense that people forget is a very good defense. Yeah, uh, I'm taking the Jags in this one. It, it, it was, it's one of my upsets for the week. I mean, they're both about in the same spot right now. But being on the road, I, I could consider it an upset. Uh, the Jaguars are trending upwards. In my opinion, they're going to have a lot better season playing in that bad AFC South. Um, I just think it's going to be a good game for Trevor Lawrence. They ended up ended the season off by upsetting the Colts. I think they're going to build the momentum. And I think they're going to find a way to win this game. And then starting off the 425 games, Cam, I'll let you go first here. Uh, why are you going with the Giants with the upset here? Uh, I think Saquon Barkley, week one, I think he's going to have a lot to prove. I think Daniel Jones is also going to feel like he's got a lot to prove. Uh, he's got a couple of new receivers out there. I don't remember who exactly. I do remember they got new receivers, though. Uh, but I think that losing – A.J. Brown will be something that the Titans struggle with, losing Julio Jones as well. It's taken a lot off of their offense. But yeah. Derrick Henry being back as well, we'll see how that running back matchup is really what it's about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the same page there with you. You know, it's just going to be kind of a running game, run game first, um, and then whoever's going to have to throw is more than likely going to have to lose this game, I think, personally. Um, just because, you know, it's not too – top 10 quarterbacks here facing each other in a duel. That's going to be a defense, kind of ugly game, probably 2013, something like that. Um, I'm sure, Ethan, you feel the way, same way on that. Yeah, I think I would take Tannehill over Daniel Jones just as a quarterback. I just think he's going to have make the plays needed to win the game, like in the fourth quarter, third and six. They need to get a first down, they, and they got to throw the ball. I think the Titans, I think that Tannehill's got a better shot at doing that, and the Titans just have a better – overall roster their defense is better so i'm taking the titans in this one and then probably one of the best games of the 425 slate we got cardinals chiefs anticipated debut for a few players here um, especially the chiefs whole wide receiving room um, and then obviously the cardinals new look marquise brown so the wide receivers in this game are going to be pretty much the most important part uh, depending on who wins this game um, for there i'm going with the cardinals just because one well they got Marquise Brown, and I think that connection is going to heat up again, just like it was at Oklahoma uh, with Brown and Murray. And then when you have James Conner, who led the league last year in touchdowns, uh, he get you know he scores no matter what. And if he does, then I think the Chiefs, you know, could be in for a will or hurt here on Week One. I'm taking the Chiefs in this one. I just a better overall team. They got Mahomes is going to have another great season, along with. You know, Travis Kelsey, their new look, their new look offense, I think it's going to be not as um, they won't be able to score as fast, but I think they're going to score the same amount of points as they do. Uh, normally, they still got they got all the weapons in the world. Uh, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, new running backs. I just think they got enough weapons and they have the better coaching play. I, I do think the Cardinals have a chance. They played good, good earlier, earlier in the season, but I just got to take the Chiefs in this one. Yeah, I feel like the Chiefs like to get tricky early on, especially getting Juju Smith-Schuster. I'd like to see what kind of new plays they implement with him being involved. It'll just be interesting to see the wide receiver matchup, like you said, Zach. And then another great game to start the week one slate. Obviously, Chargers, Raiders, huge implications last year in the last game of the year. Obviously, Chargers won the game. Or, sorry, Chargers should have won the game, but blew it, you know, just let the – Called the timeout, tried to send it, just tied, both get to the playoffs. But, you know, Chargers missed that up, and the Raiders win to move to the playoffs. Um, so I'm pretty sure the Chargers are here, are looking for revenge in that game. Solely on that, you know, based on no one else, adding Devontae for the Raiders, uh, Chargers having a stacked wide receiver core. I mean, defense both got better here, but Chargers at home looking for revenge. Yep, I agree. This is going to be a, a, one of the best games in this 425, this one in the Chiefs. 
Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see with uh, Devonte Adams how they how him and De Derek Carr work out, which I, I'm sure they'll be fine. They'll be good. I don't know. I just think the Chargers getting Derwin James back, getting that defense healthy. I think they're going to be solid and look to win these games earlier in the year, so they don't have to win the games later in the year and miss the playoffs like they did last year. I feel like the Raiders are going to do something something different. I feel like they're going to come up with a W here. I feel like Hunter Renfro actually is going to shock some people. I feel like he might actually come up with more receptions and more touchdowns than Devontae Adams in this first game. And then I'm the only one going with my pack here on the road in Minnesota, and it's a tough place to play, especially week one in a divisional matchup. That's not, you know, the best matchup you want to see when you lose your best receiver and have, you know, these receivers that you're criticizing in the preseason. Uh, and that's all you got to work with here. But it's Rodgers. He gets it done week week one. It doesn't matter who is, who's out there. I said it could be Greg Jennings on a broken leg, if you know what reference I'm making there. But I think the running game is going to be the key game because obviously you have Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, a good one-two punch, maybe one best in the league. Uh, going back back to back. But if Jones lines up out wide and Jones in the backfield, you really don't know what to go on there. And I think that's going to be interesting to see. Um, I just think the Packers also have a better defense moving forward as well. Uh, Jair on Justin Jefferson will be a very good matchup to see week one. Um, and solely on that, I think he'll not lock him down, but limit him. And that's why I think the Packers will escape with a victory. Uh, it's, a, it's a good take right there. By the by, a Packers fan, not a boy. I, I just think I think the Vikings are going to win this game. I think they're going to be better this year. I actually picked them to win this division. It's going to be a really close one. Uh, but the Vikings with a new new head coach, new weapons. I, I think they're going to be a scary team to face this year if they can just be not turn over the turn over the ball too much. And Kirk Cousins shows up every week. I, I do think the Vikings are going to be really solid. I think Dalvin Cook's going to have a great game against this Packers uh, rush defense, and he'll, he might score two touchdowns. Uh, but anyway, I'm taking the Vikings in this one. Uh, it's going to be a good one, though, for sure. You know, I agree with Ethan. I think the Vikings have some studs on offense. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook. And they did just add Jalen Rager, former first-round pick. So I think he's going to push that wide receiver core to the next tier to do some bigger things. And then our last game of the Sunday slate, Sunday night football with a new look broadcasting crew as well. We got the Bucks, Cowboys, and if it's anything like last year's game, man, it's we're in for a treat. Um, but it's a different story this year. You know, Brady's coming out of retirement, you can say, and going into Dallas week one with Dallas looking to prove a lot of people wrong. You know, they're Super Bowl or bust this year. Uh, Jerry Jones put that huge target on their back. Just winning the division isn't good enough anymore. Um, and it's going to be a tough struggle for him here in week one. I think the Bucks, if Godwin plays, it's going to be even scarier than it was last year. Um, replacing Antonio Brown, I'd rather have Julio right now, fully healthy than Antonio Brown. Uh, so if you have Julio, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans out there with Leonard Fournette coming out of the backfield and obviously Brady slinging it around. I mean, that's tough for those Cowboys corners to, you know, handle especially with Trayvon Diggs giving up the most receiving yards last year in the NFL I mean he's going to be in for a long day yep I agree there I think it's going to be a good game but if if anything I just think the Buccaneers are much uh they're much more better ran I think they're gonna um they're gonna hold the clock they're gonna have the time of possession is what I mean to say they're gonna they're gonna win that battle and I think Brady's going to have a great game coming out of retirement, and they're going to get the W, Sunday Night Football. Yeah, I don't think there's much more else I need to say about that. And then our last game of the week, we got the Seahawks and Broncos. And big story, obviously, around the NFL is Russ faces his former team. And, you know, what else can you say? Let Russ cook, except in a different uniform, different city. And all you got to say for this one is Broncos country. Let's ride. Let's ride. <laughs> It's right. Yep, I, I agree there. It's, it should be a – it'll be disappointing if the Broncos don't win by 14 or more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Broncos just have a better roster all around. Seahawks don't really have a number one quarterback in comparison. 
But that's going to be it for the video today. Obviously, we'll be doing one of these every week. So make sure you guys get there. Uh, turn those notifications on when we drop these videos. We'll try to have them out by every Thursday uh, before those games start. But thanks, Cam, for coming on. Ethan, as always, it's a pleasure. Bench yep. out.